In AutoCAD 2006, we improved dimensioning quite a bit. Yes. Do you, have, what do you, do you use those much, dim break? Well, we, 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 create, we dimension everything. And so really added a couple of new types of dimensioning. So we can now create uh, breaks in our dimensions, dim break, jog dimensions, right? Because we need to be able to, re, we need to be able to manipulate those dimensions. One of the frustrations has always been, you know, get the drawings to look exactly the way you want them to look. And so these are just additional enhancements that we can use to improve the way the dimensions look. And previously you might have, what, exploded, like for dim break, for oh, example. Oh, I mean, people are, they're exploding dimensions, and then of course they lose the associativity of the dimensions. You know, you don't want to do that. You want AutoCAD to continue to work the way it was designed. You want to be able to make the changes without having to explode things. Exploding is bad. Yeah, I agree. One of the ones that's huge for me is dim spacing. I had no idea how important that was going to be until I started playing with annotation. Annotation scaling. So you've got a bunch of lines of text or a bunch of dimensions that are stacked up, and now you change the scale of those dimensions, the size of those dimensions. Now they're all over each other. Well, I can very quickly select a group of dimensions and say, okay, fine, I need you to respace these based on my predetermined spacing, and it will now create the new spacing. So I've got two representations of those dimensions based on annotation scaling, and they automatically reposition themselves based on the dim space. So as opposed to manually having to grip edit. Grip edit and, and drag every single one. Now you one. just say, I want them to be this right. far apart. Right. The other one, though, it, are the multi-leaders. So I mean, we, we kind of think of leaders still as a dimensioning object because they used to be a dimensioning object. But now, really, they're a separate object. It's a multi-leader. And so I can create a, a leader from a block of text or from a block and point it at something and then add multiple leaders to point to it so I don't have to create these notes over and over again or create additional leaders that really aren't connected. Now they're all connected to the same object, which means, which means if I move the text, the leader's going to follow. That's a huge plus. I can ha if I've got a bunch of call-out bubbles, so I'll be working on drawings, and I'll have parts numbers. And I'll have the same arrow pointing to multiple parts, or maybe I'll have three or four parts that are all stacked up in the same place. It really only needs one arrow. So now I can have those blocks all stack up on the same arrow. But then did you notice that in 2010 you can also right click on the arrow now in the leader and change the type of arrow on the fly. So I could change the arrowhead to a dot or change the style of the arrow on the I fly. That. Inside of 2010, oh, just right. right click on the arrowhead now and you can select a different arrowhead type. If ever in doubt, right click. Right, if ever in doubt and all, there. yeah. I always tell my students, you want to right click all the time. It, and, the, and what happens depends on where you click, what you click on, and when you click. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's good advice, yep. right click. All right, thanks, David. You're welcome.